Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to part 3 of my Mine Factory Reloaded Spotlight. It is time to show you guys the RedNet system. Uh, the RedNet system in Mine Factory Reloaded uh, consists of RedNet cables and uh, this other nifty contraption right here in front of me, the programmable RedNet controller. Now there's a couple other blocks that uh, you know play a role in this, but these are the two big ones. And what are these things all about? They're all about redstone signals and programmable ways to emit them and do different cool things. So uh, I have to jump straight into what these guys do and all the cool stuff you can put together with them because honestly, the programmable RedNet controller is pretty awesome and uh, the RedNet cabling is really sweet. So without further ado, let's start taking a look at what Mine Factory Reloaded has done with Redstone. All right, guys, at the very heart of the RedNet system is this stuff right here, RedNet cabling. And as you can see, it's made with plastic sheets and a little bit of redstone dust. And that'll get you eight RedNet cables, which is a pretty decent amount. Now, I've got a bunch of it sitting here ready to be played with. Let's go ahead and demonstrate what it does. First off, it basically, at the very most basic form of this stuff, it acts like a redstone uh, wire, uh, except it doesn't have any loss of energy. So you can run this thing for hundreds and hundreds of blocks and you should be just fine. You can uh, connect these things up and you'll note that if you place it next to any vanilla block, and most modded blocks for that matter, it'll automatically make a connection for you. So, uh, you know, you can put it here next to a uh, piece of cobblestone and it's not connecting, okay? But you place it next to this redstone lamp and it's like, yeah, I can interact with that thing. Cool. Uh, when you place it next to the lever, it's got this nifty little contraption here that just shows that there is a connection. Obviously, without the lever there, there is no connection. Okay? Cobblestone block, no such luck. Okay? Now, if you wanted to force it to connect, uh, you could simply right-click on it with a wrench. Boom. And you'll see that it switches it into forced connection mode. And what that will do is it'll force the redstone uh, connection to occur at all the adjacent blocks near this thing. So cobblestone, dirt, whatever you want. It's going to force this individual block here to connect. Now, if I were to right click on this one, it would switch this one into forced connection mode as well. Now, the other option you have is kind of the opposite. You can go ahead and apply the uh, lever here and you'll see it automatically connected. You could switch this guy into cable only connection mode, which prevents it from connecting to any blocks. So in cable connection mode, it will not connect to any blocks. It will only connect to other cables. Okay, so those are the differences right there between the two blocks. Now, if we were to go ahead and right click it one more time, you'll see it goes into standard connection mode where it goes back to normal and it will not forcibly connect to things, but it will connect to uh, levers and redstone lamps and any other blocks that it kind of detects uh, that it can connect to. So if you're working with a mod and for whatever reason this stuff doesn't want to connect to it, just give it a good old whack with the Omni wrench here. Like I said, uh, you know, Mine Factory Reloaded has its own hammer and you can use the uh, prototype Omni wrench from Omni Tools. Okay, so those are your options with that. And at the very basic level here, you can go ahead and activate the lever and you'll turn on the light. Beautiful. So this is basically some really nice uh, redstone cabling. It, uh, you know, can go up straight up vertically, no problem. It can run along the ground. You can kind of do whatever you want with it. Pretty nifty stuff, honestly. I am impressed. It works really well. Beautiful. Look at that. How cool. Now, that's not the only thing it can do, however. It also, and it's very hard to notice unless you're paying super close attention, has this nifty little band right here. What's this guy about? Right click that band with your wrench. Boom. We've just changed the color. That's right. This cabling actually consists of 16 different frequencies, all within the same cable. If you want, you can liken it to uh, Red Power 2's bundled cabling. It has all 16 colors right there. We just hit black, and then we're back to white. What this means is you can treat it like the following. You can set up a yellow, orange, and purple band right here on this end, and then a yellow, orange, and purple band right here. And when you activate the appropriate levers, you're going to activate the appropriate lamps. Pretty awesome. Now what else is cool about this stuff, by the way, you can see I've got, you know, three cables here at the end with three levers around it. But you might have noticed, let's go ahead and expand this over here, that this stuff actually can connect on multiple sides and each side can have its own colored band. So if you want to, within one block you can control all three lamps for a total of I guess five in the end if you really wanted to. So I'm going to go ahead and switch this to orange magenta, and yellow. And from this one block, I can now control my different lights. 
How cool is that? So, uh, you know, go ahead and just switch up those bands and they can uh, have, you know, multiple frequencies all being controlled by different redstone levers or inputs on the same block, just like so. Awesome. Now these levers are also analog, meaning that they'll maintain the, the strength of the redstone signal coming in. So as we know, uh, in the recent Minecraft update, we went ahead and got, uh, you know, different levels of redstone frequency. So if you input a value of eight, so for example, we've got a weaker length here, it's going to export the same value. So whatever value comes in is exported, okay? Uh, so you can see down here that we ran out of strength, but we did carry along and this redstone cabling itself doesn't lose any at all over distance. So you can, like I said, run it about like, you know, a couple hundred blocks if you wanted to be crazy about it and you should have no problems connecting up to multiple, uh, you know, systems using this awesome redstone wiring. It's cool. So redneck cabling is amazingly useful for some complex and condensed uh, redstone contraptions. Very cool stuff, okay? That's so awesome. Now the next gadget I'd like to demonstrate for you is the RedNet meter. Simply a little piece of gold nugget, some of these plastic sheets and redstone, and you're going to get the RedNet meter. What can this do? This can tell you the strength and, um, you know, uh, on or off setting of any uh, colors along the wire. So simply right click on your wire and it's going to tell you right now all red net subnets are zero. That's because there are no red net frequencies uh, you know, on inside this cabling. But if we turn on the orange one, you'll see that we now get orange is set to 15 strength. So that's the strength of the red net signal and orange is on. All other red net subnets are zero. Flip on yellow here and we should see the same. Orange 15, yellow 15, all others are zero. Turn on the purple and again, orange 15, magenta 15, yellow 15, all other are zero. Now, if you went ahead and uh, you know weakened this a little bit so we could go something along these lines, okay? And then set up the lever right down here, okay? Now, if we measure this, we'll see that uh, orange and yellow are both 15, but magenta is 13 because it's, you know, losing two because we used redstone here, okay? So that's the strength of it. And over here, we can see that uh, white is currently at six. All other subnets are at zero. So you can use this guy. Uh, it also has a use in the uh, programmable RedNet controller, which we're going to get to in a minute. Note the little tip here. If you're lost, read the in-game manual. We'll get to that in just a minute, but this also has a use on that block. So you'll see what that's all about. So this guy, the RedNet meter can tell you all kinds of important information about your RedNet cabling in terms of how many frequencies are coming through them and what the strength of those frequencies are. Very cool. And just so you know, for those of you who are programmatically inclined, this stuff does hook up to computers and turtles. That's right. It has Computercraft integration built in. So Computercraft has no problem talking to Mind Factory Reloaded Cabling. I wrote a very simple program here. Now this is not a Computercraft spotlight, but you can see that I'm simply using the set bundled output command to uh, turn on magenta, wait a second, turn on yellow, wait a second, turn on orange, and then wait a second and continuously loop through that. So this just demonstrates to you guys using the demo program that this does exactly as shown. So keep in mind, you can use turtles and computers to actually activate these cables and they connect up to it just fine. You don't have to force the redstone connection or anything. Pretty awesome. Now the final thing I want to demonstrate to you guys with this cabling is that you can go ahead and right click with a particular die in your hand and it's going to change the frequency directly to that die for you. So you know just use whatever dies you have handy if you don't want to sit there and right click on it with the wrench and it'll jump right to whichever one you click on. So a very simple and effective way to change what frequency you're controlling using dies. Very nice. Now for the uh, most interesting and complex part of this spotlight, we have to jump into the programmable RedNet controller. I'm very excited to show this to you guys because it's extremely customizable and programmable. You just have to, you know, get a little bit, you know, get your head wrapped around what's the potential of this thing and you're going to be like, whoa. Uh, it's pretty ridiculous what you can do. So why don't I start showing you guys the basics of what I've so far figured out with programmable RedNet controllers. I don't have an extremely awesome concept and grasp of them just yet, but uh, what I'm probably going to do is just show you the best I can with some basics, and then once I get a little bit better at it, maybe I'll have a special video dedicated to just all kinds of cool programmable RedNet controller stuff down the line. But like I said, for now, I'm going to show you guys the basics just to get you familiar with how it works, and maybe show you how to make a couple basic circuits that look really cool, like the one I have right here, which is basically um, a control system that allows you to flip a lever to turn on a five second timer, okay? Now the uh, timer over here, or the lever over here, 
just activates whether or not this frequency, which is blue, is emitting every five seconds it's on, and then for five seconds it's off, and then for five seconds it's on, and then for five seconds it's off. Okay, so that's the basic right there. So this is the white frequency it's set up, and over here the blue is on and off for five seconds at a time. So on five seconds, off five seconds, on five seconds, there we go, and then after a few seconds there it'll flip off again. Pretty cool. So it's a combination of uh, basically a gate uh, with a timer, basically. Okay. So let's show you guys how to deal with this programmable RedNet controller and uh, some of the cool stuff you can do with it. And the recipe, by the way, is not too bad. Programmable RedNet controller requires uh, a diamond and some gold, some lapis, and some redstone. It requires some plastic sheets, and it requires this programmable RedNet controller housing. Okay, now you can use this block in world as a decoration block, but it's basically also part of the uh, ingredients of this thing. So if you want, you can place it down. It does nothing by itself besides look awesome, uh, but you can go ahead and use it in the recipe to make the programmable RedNet controller. So let's start playing with this thing and we'll see what we can do with it. All right, before you get too much into this thing, I highly recommend crafting yourself a PRC owner's manual book plastic sheets, redstone, all you need. This thing has 39 pages of instructions from basics to examples that show you how to do a bunch of different things and it's definitely gonna help you. So here's some examples of how to make a timer and how to make an AND gate and some simple stuff. Now I'm gonna go through some of these examples for you in the video explaining it as I go. Uh, now I'm also gonna show you some of the upgrades you can add to this thing and a couple other nifty tricks. So let's get started playing around with it. I'm gonna need some redstone uh, lamps, some cables, probably some levers, and maybe even, just for fun, some buttons. Sounds like a plan. Let's do it. All right, the simplest thing I can probably show you guys is an AND gate, especially if you're familiar with uh, some of the things I've built in the past. Now, all you gotta do to get this thing working with your RedNet is connect it up straight into the PRC, okay? Once the RedNet uh, cabling is connected here, I'm gonna connect it with uh, two levers. Now, a basic AND gate is simple. Uh, you wanna have both of these levers turned on in order for the output signal to uh, happen. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave this guy as white, I'm gonna switch this guy to orange, okay? So what we wanna have is both the white signal and the orange signal on in order for it to connect out uh, on this side to uh, right here. Let's just put it for simplicity's sake. And we'll make this magenta, perfect, okay? So white and orange will output magenta, which will turn on the lamp. So how do we do that? Pretty simple. Uh, we're gonna go over here and we're gonna choose and two input, because we have two inputs. We could do a three input and or a four input and, and you'll have to have all three or all four on in order for this to work. Now, that is the type of uh, thing you want in here. Now, you also have counters, you have D-latch, you have uh, a bunch of stuff I don't know anything about. You have, um, you know, maximums, minimums, uh, N-ands and N-ors, not ands and not ors, they are, not equals. Uh, you've got pulses, you've got pass-throughs, you've got randomizers and latches and T-flip-flops and timers and all kinds of crazy stuff that I can't even begin to explain. Uh, but half of it I probably know and uh, half of it I probably don't. We've also got the OR gate of course. So let's take a look at this. So right now like I said I'm doing the basic AND gate. So first off on the left these are your inputs. Okay. Now IO means input output. So if you've got an IO controller that's basically input output from some kind of uh, red net typically. Now you've also got this thing right here which is right now the letter D. That's the directional side that we're looking at here. Alright so we've got this thing. This is right now saying you're getting an input output from down the bottom of the thing. That's not what we want. That's up. That's north. Hmm. Well, what direction is this? This is south, actually. So our input outputs are on the south side of this block, right? So let's set this guy to south, okay? And we're actually getting our inputs from both our inputs come from the south side. Next up, we've got the color of the inputs. So this is white and orange, right? Now I'm going to go ahead and flip this to white. And I'm going to flip this guy to orange, okay? It's basically a left click to increment and a right click to decrement. So if you want to go backwards in direction, you right click. If you want to go forwards in direction, you left click, okay? Same for the colors. There we go. All right, so left click forward, right click backwards. All right, so we're going to say white and orange is going to do something, all right? Now, one of the options is null, which means don't do nothing. 
Well, that's not what we want. We actually want some kind of output. Now we want to output on the north face because that's the face that this cabling is connected to. So we're going to change this to input output on the north face and we're going to change this to the magenta color to match the magenta. So what we're going to say here is if you get a white signal and an orange signal on the south face, go ahead and output a magenta signal on the north face. I hope I did that right. Let's find out. White and orange. Outputs purple. Perfect. Any one of these being turned off and we're no longer receiving the signal. All right, that's an important piece. So both have to be on in order for this to work. So we've made an AND gate using our PRC thingy, programmable red net controller thingy. All right, that's the basic gist. Now you don't have to have these on separate faces, by the way. If you wanted to, uh, you could simply do the following. You ready? Let's take a look. Uh, let's just run some cabling right here. Oh, I don't want this thing to connect, do I? Probably not. So we're just going to right click on the cable and set it to uh, set cable to cable only connection mode. All right, now I'm going to put this guy here. And now right now it's getting a signal because the white signal is what's controlling that. Okay, so that's white. See, if I turn this off and turn white on, it'll still work. But we're going to switch this guy up to magenta. All right. So note now that the magenta is not being lit up because the PRC is programmed to output its magenta on the north face, which is this one. This cable is actually coming out of the south face of the block. It's coming out of this face. So if we want to, we need to change this to south. Okay. Well, that didn't work because we left it on south white. We need to change it to south magenta. And now it's working. So we could have this all bundled up on the same side. And we can have multiple circuits on multiple sides. So if we wanted to, we could have something over on this side doing something completely different. And in order to do that, we're going to want to use the next page. Right now, we're only on page one of six. We can have six different circuits inside this thing doing six different things. Whoa. Check it out. So page two. Right now, nothing's happening on page two. We could flip this guy over to an XOR gate if we wanted to, okay? We're going to do a two input XOR gate. And this one is going to be all about the north side. So this thing, all right, page one was all about the south side. And we set it up so that, you know, south white and south orange output to south magenta. And it's an AND gate. Page two is going to be an XOR gate. So let's set this guy up. Uh, we're going to set it up so that on the north side, white and the north side orange but we're going to do an XOR which means an exclusive OR which is a great way to set up a light switch by the way and I'll show you why if you haven't seen my why exclusive OR is awesome for light switches tutorial all right we're going to do magenta so white exclusive OR orange on the north side brings me purple let's set it up okay so we're going to set up something like this white, orange, and then over here, we'll set up a light and we'll make it magenta, okay? So this thing should now properly be configured. I don't think this thing minds if it gets wet, but I'm turning off the rain because rain's annoying. There we go. So this thing should work now. Why is exclusive or really nice for a light switch? Well, in your house, almost all your light switches that have two switches on the same light are wired up with an exclusive or. What it means is anytime you flip any light switch. So for example, I flip this one, it turns on, but then I flip this one and it turns off. I flip this one again and it turns on and I flip this one again and it turns off. So anytime you flip a switch, it changes the state of the light, regardless of which switch you flip and regardless of what condition it's in. Because an exclusive OR means only one or the other can be turned on for the state to be on on the purple side. So if they're both on, it's false. If they're both off, it's false. But if one or the other is on, it's uh, true, okay? So that's your basic gist. And that's why it's great to use an exclusive OR for a light switch, where over here, both have to be on uh, in order for this to work. Okay, so now we've got two frequencies and two different controls set up on the same block, just controlling different sides in different ways. And there's, like I said, six different pages of this thing. And you don't have to uh, do things all differently on different sides. You can actually pass information from one circuit to the next using constants and variables, which I'll get to in just a moment. So if I haven't sufficiently blown your mind on what the programmable Redneck controller can do, wait until you see some of the next stuff coming up. We've got uh, circuits 
that can do variables and constants. And in order for that to work, all we gotta do is come up with another little nifty gadget right here, okay? So let's go ahead and output um, on the top, okay, this guy. And we'll put a light on top of it. Boom, just like so. All right, we'll leave that white. White's fine. Doesn't matter what color you use for this demonstration. All right, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how to make a timer. It's real simple. It's actually called a um, wave square, which is, uh, you know, nicknamed the timer in here. Now, you uh, have an input and you have an output, just like before, okay? But what I want to do with this input and output is I'm going to set the input. Uh, the input on the timer, as far as I understand it, is the uh, number of ticks to be on and off. Okay, so instead of changing this to an input signal, okay, like right now I've got, uh, you know, the south, right? So let's demonstrate this real quick, actually. All right, uh, we've got, let's set it to the south side and we'll leave it as white. And we're going to output um, up to white, okay? And note now that we're uh, getting a nice steady light going on. Cool. Okay, but that's not what we want to do. So we're going to go ahead and change this guy from, um, you know, recognizing a side. We're going to actually set it to a constant. Now we can set the constant number of ticks for this to go. So I'm right now going to set it to 10. 10 ticks is half a second. So this thing should go on and off every half a second. On for half a second, off for half a second, on for half a second, off for half a second, just like that. If I bump it up to 20, it's going to be one second at a time. So on for a second, off for a second, on for a second, off for a second, just like that. So that's your timer, okay? And the constant variable there is what's coming in. Now, if you want, you don't have to click a bunch of times. If you want to get this up to 100, you don't have to click 80 times, don't worry. Just like before, left click to increase, right click to decrease, but you can middle click to increase by 16. So if you want to bump this up to 100, just middle click a few times so you get close and then adjust it as needed. And 100 ticks is five seconds. So there we go. It's off for five seconds, and then it'll be on for five seconds cool, right? So that's how you make a timer. Not bad. Now, before I get much further in this whole design, I want to show you the RedNet Historian. This is cool. It's a bookshelf with some other cool stuff around it. And basically, this will allow you to monitor one of the color frequencies on a RedNet cable. Now, you don't have to have the, uh, you know, RedNet uh, controller here, but I want to demonstrate this for you guys. So I've actually got one set up over here. Uh, this RedNet Historian, okay, is measuring the white signal, and it's currently maxed out at 15 because that's the strength of the signal coming in. If I turn this off it's down at zero okay so see how that's no longer running okay this one is monitoring the blue frequency so this is telling me what the frequency of blue is in order for this to be changed you simply gotta uh, right click on it with uh, the color you want to control so right now we're measuring the red frequency there is no red frequency and you can see that the blue is still going on and off uh, but we're not getting any reading here because this is monitoring the red frequency if we want to monitor the blue frequency again we hit it with the lappies okay so that's what the red net historian does and it's pretty nice because it also will tell you uh, the frequency strength so let's take a look at this. So if I put the RedNet Historian over here, and uh, by default it's on white, notice the graph is low here to the ground. That's because uh, we've got this uh, strength meter, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and uh, hook up some more levers along the line here. And when I flip these on, as we get closer and closer to the RedNet, so let me go ahead and just flip on this lever. See what happened? Oh, fancy. All right, uh, if we bump this guy on, let's go ahead and turn this off. We'll turn this one off as well, too. Well, you get the point, right? It's measuring the uh, strength of it. So let's just uh, put this guy on again, and boom, it peaks up real high there. Very nice. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and remove this again, and we'll uh, run this redstone signaling again. There we go. Okay. So we're getting higher and higher numbers. Very cool. So you can measure the exact strength of one frequency. Now this is a work in progress block. It's a little bit, uh, you know, not complete. There's some things that are going to happen with it. So uh, expect more to come out of this historian. It's going to be really cool. Uh, you know, Power Crystals has already told me some of the things he has planned for it, and it sounds amazing. But I wanted you guys to see the historian because it's going to be pretty useful to help you troubleshoot and diagnose what's going on uh, on the screen right here. So now let me show you guys some of the other stuff like variables that I haven't gotten to just yet. So as a matter of fact, this setup that I have right here is a perfect example of variables. Remember what I did before on uh, this guy over here. I set it up two different things, really. I've got the timer going, which is a constant 100 pulse, and it sends 
the um, you know on off signal to the white frequency on the up directional okay so every you know 100 ticks or every five seconds or so it's turning on and then it waits another 100 ticks or five seconds and then turns off okay so that information the uh, turn on white is being passed upwards uh, along the white frequency so that's basically information that's being passed up it's saying hey turn this guy on now instead of passing it directly to the cable we could store it in a variable and that's what I'm doing over here on page one of six okay I've got a constant 40 which is uh you know two seconds so you can see here every two seconds i changed it from five to two just to make it a little bit more entertaining for you guys all right every two seconds we're turning on and off so i'm sending that into instead of a frequency output or a color i'm sending it into a variable now different variables exist in the system you can see that we can bump up the variable so right now we have variables 0 through 15 okay so we have 15 different variables that we can store this uh signal in we can say it's like on or off basically Variables can actually store any number. It's not just the on or off signal, but you know, just think about it like that for now. Um, it pretty much, uh, you know, stores any number. So right now we're storing the fact that we're sending an output um, into this variable number zero. Okay. Next page. All right. We're using a gated pass through. Now this is pretty much an AND gate. Um, there's a minor difference between an AND gate and a gated pass through, and I'll show you that in a minute. But um, you know, let's just for demonstration purposes use an AND gate just to make it easier for you guys because you've seen it before. So our AND gate has an input 0 and input 1, right? So input 0 is that variable. So that basically we're passing the variable from the first part of the program, which was, you know, every, you know, two seconds turn it on and then two seconds turn it off, two seconds on, two seconds off, okay? That variable is stored in variable 0. And then we're saying use an AND gate with that variable and the white signal from the north side face. This happening to be north. Yep, look at that, north. All right, and that's the white signal right here. So we're basically, the timer's running first, and then it's being anded with, uh, you know, the input number one, the white signal over here. And then what it's doing is outputting on the south face along the blue. So you can see here's the south face, and we've got the blue signal connecting to the lamp. Awesome, right? So basically what we've got right here is uh, a timer and an AND gate using variables to pass the information from the first page to the second page. Whoa. Uh, now, this is where it gets a little complex and you start to see like, holy cow, this can get really deep if I want to. All right, hopefully I'm not blowing any minds yet, but I'm probably about to because I didn't understand what this was, the difference here, and then Power Crystals told me, and I was like, oh boy, that's complex. Uh, let's see, the pass-through, the gated pass-through that we were using a minute ago, I told you was pretty much the same thing as an AND gate, right? Pretty much. All right, let's go ahead and do this. AND gate to input. What I'm going to do is instead of continuing this frequency right here, I'm going to break this guy. I'm going to put some redstone wiring like this. Ta da Okay. Note that the input on the white is a lower value, right? Because it's not a max 15. It's right around like, you know, 12 or 13 or something like this. If I wanted to check, I could even check the rednet meter. And we can see that the rednet input white 11, all other is zero. But outputting on this side is blue 15. Okay, that's what an AND gate does. An AND gate is digital, meaning it's only on or off. It doesn't store the values. Uh, what I was using a minute ago was gated pass through. Boom. Now let's see what happens. You ready? Let's take a look. I'm going to swap this so that we have uh, the north white and then we're going to have um, variable zero. Oh boy, look at that. So what happens here is now the gated pass through is basically taking that strength here, the input strength, and it's, you know, gating it up with the constant timer that we have or the variable timer. Okay. And we're outputting on a same level as uh, this thing. So this is white 11, right now all's off, and then blue is 11. So that's the difference in the gates. So some of these gates can respond to digital, which is basically on or off, and off being zero, on being the max, which is 15. Other ones can respond to the uh, analog data, which is the strength of the redstone signal. Pretty insane. Cool. Now in here, you can go ahead and see that it's actually storing variables. So check this out. Um, you can right click with the red net meter to see what the variables are currently set to. So variable one is 15 when it's on. Okay, pretty cool. Look at that. Right now, 
it's not, or variable zero that is. So when it's off, variable zero is not listed. When it's on, variable zero is 15. So you can go ahead and see that it's storing the variable in variable zero, and you can see what it's at. Now, the reason some of those variables are on is because I've been playing with this thing a little bit. Uh, but if we come over here and see this one, we can see all variables are currently zero, okay? Pretty cool. So you can do all kinds of interesting things with your variables and you can read them using the RedNet meter. So remember, the, the, the wave that we were using a minute ago for our timer was a square wave, which was basically maxed at 15 for a few seconds, then minimum at zero for a few seconds, and then maxed at 15, minimum at zero. What we have next to show you is a sine wave, which looks a little something like this with the gated historian. So it starts at zero, and then it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, all the way up to 15, and then back down to zero. Um, and it looks like it lasts for about a tick per number. That's neat. And it's really cool to see that on the historian because it gives you a clear indication what it's doing. Now, obviously, the redstone lamps aren't going to uh, react too well to this thing, but it's still pretty cool. So the triangle is a slightly, it's different from sine, but it looks similar and it's uh, got this, uh, you know, rising and falling effect. And it occurred to me like, hey, I just remembered Zycraft lights can respond to the strength of the redstone signal, can't they? Look how cool this looks. Brighter and dimmer. Wow, that's awesome. So this should, again, be giving you guys some cool ideas on some of the awesome things you can do with this programmable RedNet controller. All right, the last block I'm going to show you guys is the programmable RedNet uh, controller's Red Note block. All right, this is a Redstone uh, accepting block, note block, that can accept uh, different kinds of, uh, you know, Redstone frequencies and uh, emit a note based on that frequency. And there's a little bit more details on the forum thread, but I just wanted to show you because it's pretty cool. Um, a RedNet value from 0 to 120 will uh, trigger a note. So uh, this is a demonstration of how some of these values can be a little bit higher or lower. Uh, but right now what I want to do just for demonstration purposes is show you guys what a sine wave looks like with the note. So note every time it hits the peak there, it's emitting a note, okay? Cool. There you go. So I'm going to switch it to sine wave. Pretty neat, right? And then triangle again. <laughs> Pretty awesome, right? So yeah, really cool some of the stuff you can do with these programmable RedNet controllers. I mean, I haven't even scratched the surface. I've only done like three or four, let's be honest, of the different um, gates that you can do in here. And if you're really good with like, you know, logic gates or, you know, um, what you call electrical engineering or something along those lines. All right, I'm turning this off for a minute. There we go, much better. If you're really good at that kind of stuff, this could be ridiculously cool for you. And even if you're not terribly good at it, just the simple mechanics of the different colors with the RedNet cabling, you don't even need this program on RedNet controller. And that reminds me, I do have one more thing to show you with regards to RedNet controllers. If you're finding that six pages of uh, controls and 16 variables, zero through 15 is 16 variables, uh, is not enough for you, go ahead and craft yourself some upgrades by way of the PRC logic expansion card. Uh, the basic one, which, uh, you know, the recipe right here requires gold ingots, gives you one more extra circuit and eight more variables. So we can go ahead and plug this guy in like so, and you'll see it sitting in there. And you'll note that now you have page three of seven. And if we go ahead and check out our uh, variables page right here, uh, we can actually go beyond the 15 up to 24. Nice. All right, so 0 to 23 is 24 variables. Now, if you wanted to get even more, okay, you could go ahead and give yourself one of these guys. Take that expansion card and add more gold to it, and you'll wind up with three more circuits and 16 more variables. So you can get really in-depth. Cool. Uh, this guy allows you to get up to uh, 0 through 39 variables and 3 through 10. Wow. Awesome. And then, of course, finally, the last one here requires some more diamonds and gold, and this will give you five more circuits and 24 more variables. Uh, if you really want to get nuts, you can. It's pretty crazy how many variables you can wind up with. If you put three of these upgrade cards in here of the top tier ones, you can get some pretty advanced stuff. I like it. And then the final thing to show you guys is the PRC memory card. Let's say you spend a whole bunch of time and effort building exactly the way you want your programmable RedNet controller to work, but you'd like to copy it. Not a problem. Just craft yourself a PRC memory card. This guy, you can go ahead and right-click, PRC programming, uploaded to memory card from PRC. 
beautiful. So, um, you know, let, why don't I show you guys real quick a demonstration. You can completely reset your programmable redneck controllers by clicking the reinitialize button. And just because it's so dangerous to do, it wants you to confirm it. So click reinitialize and then click confirm. And boom, you've lost everything. It's gone, completely erased. All the settings we did, all the work we just did over the past spotlight, gone. But since I have this PRC memory card with uh, information stored on it, not a problem. Just right click and PRC contains insufficient circuits. Oh no, we have to match. So let's make sure that we have the same circuit set up. Put these circuit cards back in and go. PRC programming downloaded from memory card to PRC. Beautiful. Now we've got all our stuff back. There's the page one that we set up earlier and the page two and three and all that cool stuff that we were messing with. So you can easily transfer your programs from one PRC to the next using the programmable memory card. Simply craft it in a crafting table by itself. Right now you can see place in the crafting grid to wipe and boom, it's been erased. Ready to be reused somewhere else so we can copy another program if we wanted to easily enough. Like we can come over here, Reinitialize, confirm, and boom, we are no longer doing any fancy things. Note the sine wave over here, the, the little blue meter, nothing's happening anymore because we just wiped the program. Not a problem though, we can reinstate the program and boom, everything's back up and running. Beautiful. And again, I could go ahead and get another one of these PRC thingies. So let's get a programmable redneck controller, place it on the ground, no thing in there programmed and if we go ahead and pop this guy on we just popped it in there and now there's our uh, wave square timer and our pass through gated beautiful so the exact same program got copied again from here to here and you can copy as many times as you want all right guys i think i have to wrap up because i've basically covered the few things that i understand about programmable redneck controllers now there's obviously a lot that these guys can do and i will uh you know do my best to do a little bit more research try and get some more information for you and uh do what i can to show you some more of the cool gates and stuff that you can come up with but at the very basic level you guys should be able to come up with some really interesting designs using programmable redneck controllers they're extremely powerful blocks if you understand how to use them um and that like i said at the very basic you can use them for simple and and xor and or gates if that's all you understand like me not a problem and even if you have trouble understanding that stuff go ahead and just play with the redneck cabling i mean all by itself you can go ahead and have orange and white and all the the 16 different colors and you're able to use it for all kinds of nifty builds without getting into this complex programmable stuff and don't forget you can hook them up to computer craft computers awesome so the rednet stuff in mine factory reloaded is frankly amazing and it blows my mind and uh it sometimes can give you even a little bit of a headache but it's awesome i really really like how cool this thing is and just the the amount of stuff you can do i'm really looking forward to the changes in the histogram i want to see uh like i said power crystals told me a few things he has in mind to make this thing be able to do and it's going to be much cooler in the near future and he even has some other cool stuff planned this is basically the first or maybe a very early implementation of the programmable rednet stuff awesome so guys, it is unfortunately wrapping up point. Do got to get going. So this is Direwolf20 signing off on part three of the Mine Factory Reloaded Spotlight. Hope you guys enjoyed checking it out. It's a really cool mod that just adds so much cool stuff to the game. From conveyor belts to tons of automation to some really incredible redstone stuff. Definitely worth at least downloading and playing with. Now for the question on everyone's mind. Will this be included in a future Direwolf20 mod pack for FTB? The answer is... Absolutely. Absolutely. I will definitely be including this in the FTB pack Direwolf 20 in the very near future. Expect it in either the 1.5 or the 1.6 version, whatever gets released publicly, uh, you know, pretty soon. We will definitely have this in there. So hope you guys again enjoyed the Mine Factory Reloaded Spotlight's three-part series because it needed three 30-minute videos and I still didn't cover everything this mod can do. Direwolf 20 signing off. Take it easy.